guys, thank you for joining me. Now, if this is your very first time tuning in, let me introduce myself. My name is Cynthia. I am the creator and the founder of Crowns of Glory Collections. Now, to my royal nation, you know who you are. Thank you so much for tuning back in and thank you for all of your support. So, this is the wig that I have created a playlist for. So this is a wig. I showed you how the proper way to shampoo your wig. I showed you how to do a deep condition, deep oil condition on your wig as well. So this is that same wig. And I said that I wasn't going to do anything to it. But I once I start looking at it, what I did, I had to, on the inside of the wig, I had to get my lace tint. Like I said before, I made my own lace tint side of the wig. I sprayed it down really good and I let it dry and then I sprayed it down, sprayed it down again and let that dry. Once that dried down, I took my got to be glue. So on the inside of the wig where the lace is, and then I took the got to be glue and I sprayed that down and I let it dry as well. So that is what I did to the wig off camera. So I just want you to know. So I've already done that. Again, when the hair was wet, I did the part in it. So I'm gonna go back in just to make sure that everything is still where it needs to be in that parting area. Need to make sure that you have enough hair here to cover those wefts. Okay guys, so you want to make sure everything, all the wefts in the back are, are concealed. So once you do that, you have your part where it needs to be or where your client would like for it to be. The next step you're going to go in and you want to make sure that you create that hairline. Again, your hairline can make or break your wig okay because that is very important and people don't care that you know that they have a wig but you don't want it to look like a wig that's one thing people know that I wear wigs they know I make wigs but I do not want my wig to look like a wig so you have to do these extra steps, guys, to make sure that you're not walking around looking like you have a wig on. You do not want, you want to keep them guessing, honey. Keep them guessing. All right. So, again, you just want to sporadically pull out some hairs. I've already cut my, the hairs down anyway but it's just a little stragglies here. So I'm gonna go in and cut that down. Make sure I don't have anything just kind of hanging over. Again, you're gonna pull out sporadic hair around your hairline. For all the people that like sideburns like I do, you wanna make sure that you pull that out as well on each side. So the products that I use, I've said it so many times, guys, is my mousse. Um, I have my Jane Carter solution. So I use that as well. And I have my um, wet stick. So those are the items that I'm going to use yet again these items are one of the staples into getting, I use all the time on my wig to get it to look like it's natural. So everything combed out, I'm gonna take my mousse. And guys, I like this mousse. I was using the Nairobi, um, mousse but 
I found that this actually worked better when it comes down to molding my hairline. It does. I still use Nairobi on other things, but not molding down my hairline. This just works better. And I actually got mine from my local beauty supply store. And I think it was like maybe five, six dollars, something like that. It wasn't it wasn't expensive. see how I'm putting it, some of the product back into the, the hair as well. You need to make sure that you do that. Okay. So, now after I do that, I'm going to get a little bit of my Jane Carter, just a little bit. It's really thick. that through and sometimes I use my wax stick on that area and because I just washed it and everything now if I've already styled I'm just really rebumping everything I typically would not use my wet wax stick, but because this wig just been washed and everything, so I need to make sure that I get it back. Okay, and also I take my wax stick and I go into the parting area all the way around. Okay, all the way around. And like I said before, guys, you could have all the product, but the main thing, yes, is the heat. Is the heat. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you up a little bit closer to me so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I typically start where the part is, so I will start right there. That's just what I like to do, okay? No rhymes and reasons. I just, that's just what I do. But I take my index finger, and I hold it down right here where the lace is, and that's just going to stabilize everything, get everything um, stable so I can hold it, and you're going to bring that hair back into the wig. Okay, so you're going to swoop it and you're going to bring it. And sometimes that lace will try to fold up under itself. So you need to make sure that it doesn't do that because so you don't want to mold it down. And now you realize that your lace is up under that. Now you got to work that out. Okay, so once you do that, you take your comb and you're going to apply some pressure right there to hold it in place. You're going to take your heat. Now, my comb is heat resistant, so it's not going to damage it. Again, I'm always giving you disclaimers. Now, if your lace is HD lace, you need to make sure that your flat iron, or your, I'm sorry, your curling iron is not really hot. You don't want to be at the highest temperature because... Again, warning, 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 you will destroy it. Okay. Do the same thing. Take that comb, you pull it right there. You take your heat along with that pressure that you're going to apply. Let it go. 
go back into the wig. It'll flow right on back into the wig. Again, guys, the reason why I do this is one to give you the illusion like it's actually, you know, growing out of your scalp. That's why it's really important for you to get around you know, really flat as possible. Hold it with that index finger. You got to have control over it. I'll slide that comb back in there. Just like that. Mm hmm. Just like that. Now, I have people uh, want to know how often should you shampoo your wig? How, how often should you wash your wig? Now, that varies. And the reason why I say it varies because if you wear your wig every single day, I don't, you know, like I said, it's adhesive-free. But from the oil and the buildup that you're using on your hair, um, even with your natural hair up under your wig, that oil from your hair will seep into your wig sometimes. So you need to shampoo it depending on how much you wear your wig. Now, if you're wearing your wig every day, I would say you need to shampoo your wig every other week, just like you do your natural hair. So twice a month, every other week, you need to go in and shampoo. Now, because I have several wigs, it, it could be months before I have to shampoo a wig because typically I'm just changing up. But if you have uh, one wig that you really use, at one point I had, this before I start making wig, I had two wigs. I had one wig that I would wear when I went to work. And then I had another wig. So when I go out, church, whatever, um, I had a different wig. So you know how your grandmama said you got that Sunday wig? Okay, that's what I had. But again, if you only have one wig, you just need to make sure that you take care of it. And the way that you really uh, preserve your investment, your wig, you have to take care of it, guys. You, you know, just like you take care of your own hair because this is human hair so you have to take time go in there keep it shampoo keep it conditioning all those things if you want it to last now i'm going to go to the other side do the same thing take my index finger and bring it back into the wig back into the wig Take my heat and I'm gonna bring it back. I'm just the swooping motion. You see that? So you need to make sure that you put pressure on it and bring it, it back into the wig. Bring it, it back into the wig. And you need to do a little bit at a time. 
and that's going to help you get everything nice and flat as well. If it's too much hair and you're doing that all at one time, it's not going to work. I've tried it. It's not, it's not going to work. So if y'all like skipping steps, you know, it's not, it's not going to work if you want to skip steps. So you need to just make sure that you take your time. And once you get used to it, it's not going to take a long time anyway. But if this is a new skill that you're learning how to do, take your time, guys. Don't be in a hurry. here because I like for this to kind of fan out here I just like for it to come out like this now if you want it to come down you're just gonna bring it down just mold everything down just like that but I typically like for it to come out like that so again I go into it but I bring the hair I pull it against the barrel and just kind of move it along. Okay. So I'm going to come all the way around. Remember, I used my wax stick already, so it's already on the wig. See the motion that I'm doing? I'm applying pressure. Somebody want to know why I don't use my pressing comb for this anymore. And the reason why I don't is because the hot curl just give me the, um, I guess it's the ability to go in there and really press down on it versus um, my pressing comb. It just wouldn't, it doesn't have the weight that I could, you know, and press down into it. Because, again, the key to it, you want everything to be really nice and flat. You don't want any humps or bumps. And that's when your wig look like a wig. When, I mean, if you see people out, um, again, before I knew what I was doing, that was me. What? <laughs> but once I learn, again, once you know better, do better. But... You need to make sure that's the key. Get everything nice and flat. Nice and flat. Want to go in over to conceal that
You don't want to have a hump in the back. You don't want to look like you have a, a cone head. So make sure everything is nice and flat. So when it comes down to this, doing the hump, what I'm going to do is, and I'm not getting ready to, to curl it yet, but still, I like to still go in here. I'm going to go behind this just a little bit, if you can see here. So I'm going to go behind here just a little bit. And this is going to help me form that, that hump in the top as well. Take that. You want to press it going back and going forward. And so this hair right here, you're going to actually take that hair with the bare hair, you're going to fold it back. Okay? Just like that. Now this is for, if you want this to fall down in your face like that, that's what this is for. I like for my hair to kind of fall like that. So that's why I'm doing that. So that's not what you're going for. You don't want to do that part. Just like that. Just like that. Now I showed you last time after the wig my traditional way that I hot curl then versus the other way where you take the hair you go around the barrel and i was shook yes i was because i really thought the way that i've been doing it would give me a better curl better hole all those things but i don't know i mean i i'm uh, what i'm gonna do is doing a wrap wrapping the hair around the barrel so that's how i'm gonna curl this wig today so again I love to do everything in sections because it doesn't make me feel like I'm overwhelmed, I guess. That's why I like to work in smaller sections and I can see my progress a little bit better. Oops, I think that's still too much hair. Now, you need to determine how you want or your client want their hair in the front. Do they want to come into their face or back? So, how they actually want to wear their wig. So, you need to know that. And that's going to help you with deciding how you want to hot curl the hair as well. Okay? Okay.
please do not forget your heat protected. It's very imperative that you use that. You don't want to damage your the hair. Remember, it's human hair, so you can fry it. like that. Make sure you comb it through again. You never want to hot curl your hair without combing it through. You don't want to do that guys. You want to make sure that you comb everything out. Make sure you don't have any kind of tangles or you know anything in the hair before you go into it. So again I'm going to wrap it around the barrel so I'm gonna take the hair and I'm gonna wrap it around just like that now you bring your bear around just like that then you clamp it okay Make sure you drop it in your hands. You don't want to drop it while it is hot because if you do, your curls will drop. So you're going to hold on to it. And I like to use my got to be spray and it's just going to help those curls to last a little bit longer. sure you got your barrel just like that but you don't want to clamp it down like this because if you do you're going to have a um a clamp that mark on your hair and you don't want that so you're going to bring it on around and then you're going to clamp let it go you want to make sure even the ends of the hair go through that barrel Pull on it a little bit and then drop it in my hand again. Fear could handicap you. Uh, I'm serious. But remember, faith and fear cannot dwell together. So, sometimes you got to move even when you're scared. Even, even when you're afraid. You know, I, I did and still doing it today. Still moving and you know, you put out a video. You don't know if it's going to, you know, people going to like it or, you know, 
You're going to get more. So all those things will play in your mind and it will cripple you and become a, you know, crutch that you don't even move. You do nothing. You just steal. You know what I'm saying? So you got to keep growing. And whatever you do, I don't care how old you are, if you still above ground and you got breath in your body, and if you want to do it, do it. Do it. Do it. Guys, I know you all come for this, but I just, again, I want to and just lift people up and encourage because this world could knock you down make you feel so bad about yourself and I just don't want my channel to be that I, I just I don't want any kind of negativity negative comments but that's what I really wanted to have a channel that I could cultivate people and you know encourage them lift them up and that's what I want this channel to be as well, a safe place. All right, guys, I'm still going around. And what I'm going to do is, like I did before, I'm going to speed this up. And when I get halfway, I will check back in with you, okay? Talk to you later. I'm still wrapping it around the barrel. Done that throughout this time.
and make sure that you're touching the hair making uh, so you can feel the heat so you should be able to feel the heat through the hair from the hot curler and if you do not you need to let it sit there a little bit longer Again, make sure that the end of the hair goes through that clamp as well. guys you see I'm still wrapping around the the barrel and this is my first time ever doing an entire wig like this so Let's see how it turned out together guys another thing that I thought about I want you all to practice being kind to yourself a lot of times we could be kind to other people but we can't be we don't be kind to ourselves again like I said before we're the first one to pick ourselves apart you know look at what we don't like what we don't have, things like that. And you just beat yourself up. But you could give other people grace and kindness. But make sure that you're giving kindness to yourself. You know, grace to yourself. There's no one perfect. We all make mistakes. But find kindness for yourself. Just make a habit of being kind to yourself. All right, that is it. So now 
I'm going to take all these clamps out and we're going to comb it out. Get all the clamps out now. Those curls. Ooh. Yes. Yes, they are. All right, so let's comb it through. Typically, I don't comb it out until I get it on my head, but for this video purpose, I'm going to go ahead and comb it out now. have to go back in there and curl that part of it. Um, I had it chunked out. That's one thing about it, guys. If you don't like something, you have to go back and retouch it. Go back and retouch it. Go back and retouch it. I'm going to have to go in and redo that part. So, we have, I've shown you how to shampoo your wig so you know the proper way to shampoo, condition your wig, um, to do a deep conditioning, conditioning actually. I talked to you about the products that I like to use on my wigs. Also, I showed you how to comb it out while it's wet how to get every, your hairline to mold down like it's coming out of your scalp. And I showed you how to get these va 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 boom curls. So I have went through the entire process when I recreate a style on my wig. So go back through it. I have a playlist that this is going to be included in that playlist as well. So I have um, also in there how to cut long layers, how to, so everything is in that playlist from start to finish, how about the hump, the hairline, everything is in that play. You want to go back and look at the playlist because it's a lot of good information that you will be able to use and put in your toolbox as a wig maker or just wanting to know how to make a wig for yourself or how to style your wig, okay? So all that good stuff is in the playlist. So again, guys, always wear your crown with confidence. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Love you.